Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all doing all right on this beautiful Wednesday? Uh -huh. it's all right, this is Cooking and Learning with Care segment with Chef Destiny and Chef Aja. And we are today, we are doing your recipe. Yay! <laughs> so we are doing my Aunt Pam's recipe and Miss Betty's recipe. So we're right. going to go ahead and get started. All right. All right, good morning, y'all. I hope everybody's doing beautiful this morning. Today I'm going to be mic making courtesy of Miss Pam, a spicy acorn squash recipe with feta cheese. Um, acorn squash, we've had it on the show before. It looks like a little mini green pumpkin. It has orange flesh. This is the color. This is the color of the flesh of the inside of the pumpkin. What you would need to do is you would need to peel the pumpkin. It has a hard exterior, but just, you know, just get a good grip, get a good knife, be safe, peel the pumpkin. And then you're going to scoop out the seeds because it has seeds. And then you're going to cut it to about, let's say, half moon sizes. Okay? You can do it a little thicker if you want. Now, with um, acorn squash, butternut squash, you can keep on the skin. If you want to, you can. The skin is edible. But it's kind of tough, so I will go ahead and peel it. So these are the size pieces that you want. You are going to season your acorn squash with salt, smoked paprika, and cayenne pepper. Remember, it is spicy. Um, has a little heat. But, you know, you can adjust your level of heat to how you want it. And you're going to marinate it. So I seasoned it. You see that oil? That's what I need to keep the seasonings on there and also so the squash does not burn. I'm going to put it on a baking sheet a greased baking sheet and I'm going to put it in the oven at 425. The recipe suggests that you bake it for like 30, 35 minutes. I stopped at like around a 28 minute mark, but it depends on your oven. Okay. Okay. Now also we're going to use sage. For if y'all are not familiar with fresh sage, this is how it looks. You can find it in any grocery store almost. And what I did was I chiffonaded it. That is a term that we talked about. You roll it like a cigar. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to slice it very thinly so you have little shreds of the sage. Okay. And so, so and so after you chiffonade your sage, you have your um, excuse me, your, your squash baking. I'll say about halfway through, I put my sage on top of my squash. I didn't want it to burn. Okay. So I waited about halfway through. And I'm going to show you what the final product was. Now, the recipe suggests that we use feta cheese. Um, instead of using a plain feta cheese, I use a feta cheese that's called a Mediterranean herb. So it has a little bit more seasoning. Okay. Let me show you the final product. If y'all are able to see it, look at the moth to a Yeah. Moth. If you can see it up close. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Okay, so we have our chiffonades of sage. We have our feta cheese on top and the roasted, my hands are clean, and the roasted squash. You see the little brown bits? I hope you can. It's really delicious. It looks really good. It's yeah. actually tried. It's really good. Are there any questions? Yes, on the salt, how much salt does it say? I forget. Um, let me look on my phone. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. You're fine. It doesn't say about the salt, so I'm assuming the salt is to taste. 
Okay. Of cayenne pepper instead of a quarter of a teaspoon. Now I use a little bit more of the cayenne pepper. And they said a teaspoon of paprika. And I use a little bit more of the paprika. But the salt okay. is the taste. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. If there are any questions, that's all I have for today. And this is a really good fall recipe. It's really pretty fall flavors. It's really good. How long did you marinate it? About three to five minutes, not long, just to get a little okay. bit of flavor in it. Okay. Excuse me. All right. Acorn squash. What kind of? Can you hear me? Change. Yes, it was acorn squash. Acorn squash. Okay, they come in different colors, or all the same same color for acorn squash. The inside is all the same color, but the outside can change from green to different shades of oranges and light browns. Oh, okay. All right. So make sure I get the right kind. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so for Miss Betty's recipe is sour cream pound cake. Mm. Um, you get one cup of butter, three cups of sugar, one fourth teaspoon baking soda, one half, a half teaspoon of almond extract, one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, one cup of sour cream, six whole eggs, and three cups of all-purpose flour. And we baked it for an hour and a half at 325. Actually, mine's is still in the oven. I just want to go get it. But just to go over a little pound cake history before we get started. Every name of a dish has a history and a story to tell. Ever wonder why pound cake is called a pound cake? Does anybody know why? I think so, isn't it Everything's a pound. It's supposed to be a pound. Correct, correct, okay. correct. So, <clears throat> the origins of pound cake lie in North, Northern Europe and date back to the early 18th century. Initially, the pound cake weighed four pounds. That rules out the possibility of being named after its weight. The ingredients in the cake, however, were measured up to one pound. This is how it was traditionally made. A pound, each of these four ingredients, butter, flour, sugar, and egg. The name pound cake has stuck around ever since. Due to the traditional measurements of ingredients used in this cake, <clears throat> the size is such that it becomes possible to serve multiple families. Hold on, y'all. So the modern day families, however, prefer a lighter and smaller cake and therefore the original recipe has been modified over time as per the requirements. Today, people use smaller quantities of each ingredient, but maintain the one, 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 one ratio. A lot of different variations of the pound cake exist now across various countries. Originally, no leaveners were used in the cake except for the air whipped into the batter. It wasn't only until the 1900s that artificial leaveners like baking soda and baking powder were added to reduce the density of the cake. Other variations include the addition of flavoring agents like vanilla extract, almond extract, lemon extract, or dried fruits such as cranberries or currants. At times, some or all of the butter was substituted by cooking oil or vegetable oil to get a moist cake. One of the most popular variations is the sour cream pound cake. Thank you, Miss Betty. Um, the butter is substituted by sour cream to moisten the, moisten the cake and also get a tin of tangy flavor. Well, we're not omitting the butter. We're butter and sour cream. <laughs> and the leaveners and the extracts. <clears throat> Pound cake is quite well known in France and is called quarte quarts or four quarters, a quarter referring to a crown. The Caribbean part of the word, world that speaks French add rum to the cake for Christmas. 
Anybody mm -hmm. ever had that kind of cake, the rum cake? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, they add rum and sometimes mashed bananas. The Venezuelan's mm. and Colombian mm. version of the pound cake is called ponque, which is a Spanish phonetic approximation of the term. It is essentially drenched with wine. Mm. Mm. Okay. The Mexican version is called panque, and it follows the traditional recipe a pound of each butter, flour, sugar, and eggs. So that is our history on pound cake. And I'm going to tell you, when I first um, started culinary school, I could not make no pound cake. I think I was just whooping it to death because it was coming out so uh, heavy and, and, and hard. All right, so we're going to get started. And Miss Betty, you let me know if I'm doing anything wrong, okay? So we're going to start off with a cup of butter. Got my measuring cup. And I'm using the already softened butter, so I'm going to have to let it get room temperature. Yes. Yeah. I have a question about, can you hear me about measuring dry goods and wet goods? Does it make a difference if you use uh, the cup you use for the, for the wet goods? I mean, the wet goods and the dry goods, if, I mean, does it matter if you're using, like, say, this powerful cup of oil and you use a wet, you know, measuring cup or the dry measuring cup? Does it make a difference if you use what type of cup you use, whether it's um, dry or wet? I'm using a measuring cup, but I don't like to cross-contaminate, so I'm not going to take yeah. this same mm -hmm. one I just dipped in the butter and add the flour right into it. You mm -hmm. won't get the correct measurements. You need to have separate measuring tools unless you're gonna wash it out every time. So that's our one cup of butter. Now we need our three cups of sugar, which I already have right here. Y'all, I just brought the cake out of the oven and it's smelling up this room something serious. Mm -hmm. so that was our three cups of sugar. We're done. To let this cream. Destiny. Does it matter whether it's salted or unsalted uh, butter? Uh, Miss Betty, is that right? Uh, no, you can use either. Okay. Okay, thank you. As long as it's, I like to use the real butter though. Okay. <laughs> Mix 
that up. Then we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. That almond extract and that vanilla extract, it smells so good, y'all. Uh, Yes, it does. All right, after this is mixed up, we're going to add our cup of sour cream. Which is all of it. This is egg ounces, this is a cup right here. All right. Golden rule. Lean out for extra Amen. All right, we're going to get that incorporated. And as you can see, this recipe is a little different. It's not one pound of everything, but it's a very simple recipe. I really like it. I'm going to start. Sorry, Miss Betty, but I'm going to start using this. Okay, That's now, fine. the most important part is the egg and flour distribution. Now, you, cannot, you cannot just crack all your eggs and flour and put it in here at one time. You mm -hmm. must do it one by one. And that's what I, one of the other problems I think I was having when I was first trying to make some pound cakes. So we need three cups of flour. And if you want to sift it, you can. I didn't. But it's up to you. So I'm going to do one egg, blend, then add flour, then blend, and we're going to repeat that until all six eggs are incorporated. Right. And if you're not a professional, don't crack it right over the bowl if you're going to get eggshells in there. Crack yours on the side. Now that egg is going to mix, now I'm going to add a little bit of flour. And let that mix. Is it all purpose flour? Yes, all yeah. purpose flour. I'm going to go for the second egg now. And I just got this on low. I'm going to add the next little bit of flour. I'm doing good so far, Miss Betty. So oh, far, so good. <laughs> how many I eggs? Oh, y'all, if y'all been noticing, but eggs? a lot of me and Isaac's recipe how many? has been. Uh, hey, okay, just, thanks. Say what? They want to know how many eggs? Six. Thank you. You're welcome. What I was saying, I don't know if some of y'all noticed, but me and Isaac have been doing like a a fall harvest kind of thing as far as recipes with the colors and stuff. Um, okay. Like with the squash today, you know, those are fall colors and stuff. So, mm -hmm. all right, we're on our third egg. And you will see it slowly starting to get really creamy looking. You all can see that. Add a little bit more flour. See, one thing with baking is you cannot be in a rush. You okay. cannot do no shortcuts. You cannot cheat. You, you straight up, because baking is like math. 
And that's crazy because I never liked math in school, but I love baking. But um, I have to buckle down when it comes to baking because you have to be precise. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going for our next egg. We got two more to go. <laughs> I can remember my cousins in Oroville, Alabama, around in the 60s, my cousin would churn butter. I could just still smell that. Oh, wow. In Alabama? Or yeah. Here? Alabama. Oroville. That's where your grandfather's from. All right, now we're having our last bit of flour. It's so Orville, that was who lived there? Grandfather, your grandfather, Orville, Alabama. And then my grandma's side of the family was Lee, Alabama. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. All right, I'm going to do a little scrape down before I finish mixing, because you see at the top, you'll still have some flour up there on your paddle. You want to make sure all of that is incorporated. Scrape down your sides all the way down to the bottom. Then you want everything incorporated and smooth. Okay. Miss mm. Betty, would I get the same effect if I'm using a hand mixer? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I asked because my pound cakes sometimes turn out heavy. Well, if that's the case, sometimes when they come out heavy like that, mm -hmm. it depends on how long you bake it or maybe to so sift the flour. Yeah. Okay, so now we're all good. Everybody can see that in the um, close-up camera. Yes. Yes. We're all smooth, and it smells so delicious. The consistency, is it like a pancake mix? Like a thicker pancake mix. Okay. Yes, okay. yes it is. Um, you can see it coming. Suppose you, you suppose you use cake flour. Would it come out the same? Yeah, you can use cake flour in it. So, yeah. uh, and you wouldn't have to use the, uh, wouldn't have to use the baking soda. Baking soda. If you use uh, yeah, the soda, flour, like. the flour, you wouldn't have to use the leaven. Okay. No. Okay. All right, so then she said we needed to grease our cake pan and flour it. And I did. <laughs> and I'm going to evenly pour that in there. And I guess with the cake mix, it'd be a little bit less sugar. You mean with cake? Um, yeah. Flour? Cake flour. I think it would be the same. No, okay. it's you will use the same. Cake flour, have, cake flour is not a substitute for sugar. It's just a. No, that's what I thought. That's right. just so you don't have to put the um, baking right. soda. Right. Okay. Thank you. I like to clean up my edges, and even uh, in the center, I like to clean that up. But you can see how much cake it's going to make. Yes, ma'am. Oh, right. To the top. 
So for our caramel icing, now I did cheat on that. So okay. brought some red caramel. Because everybody don't like to stand at the stove and be stirring to get caramel from scratch. Even sometimes I don't. So this is the easier way. Get you some caramel dip from the stove. And get you another tub of regular icing, white icing, and mix the two together. Okay. And that's what I have right here. And y'all can see it has the caramel color. I don't know if y'all can see it that well, but it is caramel color. Okay. It. So. You remember you did the uh, condensed milk? You say what? You remember you did it with the condensed right, milk? Right, the one. condensed uh -huh. milk. Daddy is talking Some about on our class previously. I showed y'all how to make caramel from sweet condensed milk. And mm -hmm. all I did was put it in, the crock pot pot. in your crock pot and let it cook in there. And it will turn into caramel. But I didn't even want to fool up with none of that today. Because uh -uh. we already went over that class. So you should yeah. make it. But this is another cheating way to do it. And I'm okay. telling you, it still tastes like grandma's. Just mixing that regular white frosting and some caramel dip. Okay. So, this is how our cake came out. Did you use the whole can of white frosting? You said what? Did you use the entire can of white frosting mix? Yes, and then only half, half the tub of the, of the caramel. Okay. This is our final cake. Yes. Y'all can see that? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect yes. brown, perfect mm. height. Now it's a little warm. And I'm a little afraid to flip it over. Yeah, because it's, it's hot right now. Yeah, you have I to, wouldn't do it. So I might have to, have to, I might have to wait and show y'all tomorrow uh, mm. the finished caramel cake. I will take some pictures of it too. But it's too pretty right now. I don't want to mess it up because it just came out the oven. Yeah. You should let it rest about 20, 25 minutes of oh. cooling before you flip it over, else it's going to be crumbs, which I'm sure it's still going to taste good because it smells amazing. Um, but I hope y'all enjoyed that. I enjoyed those recipes. Thank you, my fam. Thank you, Miss Betty. These were two great recipes. I'm hey, Stacy. I'm still waiting on the rest of y'all. <laughs> we still have time? Oh, okay. I'm still waiting on the rest of y'all. We heard you. <laughs> okay. For your recipes. Okay. okay, so I missed out on the class. So we're supposed to be sending you recipes? Yes, ma'am. I told everybody to send me a recipe that is theirs or something that they really like and okay. we will incorporate it in the class. See, I don't like y'all just staring and Google eyes at me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to be participants as well. That's why you're in the class. We also are <laughs> going to do the, um, what do we call it, Miss Terrell? The uh, food show and tell. Yes. We do that. And we want to do something where we can cook one, one recipe together so y'all can do it at the same time that I'm doing it. So that's what I'm trying to keep our, our class fun and different from all the other cooking classes, which I'm sure they're doing a good job, but we're, me and Aja are individuals, so we want to keep y'all with different stuff, but I need y'all participation. And y'all know I'm going to get on y'all if you don't do it. So now, that's Miss <laughs> Pam and Miss Betty is out the way. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven other people I need some recipes from. And we'll incorporate it in our classes. It's, it's been an awesome day. We, um, we reached our 1130. I hope y'all enjoyed the class today. It has been a uh, blast. We will see y'all tomorrow. We get one day closer to the fall festival. So I get to see all y'all costumes. Please get on the show. It's at 10 o'clock on Friday. From 10 to 11.30 and then straight into my class. We're going to be live dancing. We're going to be, and I'm going to be dancing too. We're going to be showing our pumpkin. Um, maybe. Yeah, trivia. trivia. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
We doing a word scramble. We're doing a contest. We're doing a word scramble, and then we're gonna go right into um, Chef Aja and I's desserts, spooky desserts or spooky foods or harvest fall um, fall festival foods and desserts. Well, I hope y'all have a safe and beautiful day, and we will see y'all tomorrow. And Miss Betty, this is this is your cake, your birthday cake, uh, right here. <laughs> I'll make sure Ms. I give it to you. Uh, Miss okay. Betty, question. Miss Betty, uh -huh. how, do, how do you make the, sometimes I see the pound cake with the crust, like on the edges or on top? Or... That's oh, from the sugar. Crust. This is okay. crust and edges. Uh -huh. That's It'll the have... best part. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. so you can see all of this is okay. crust. These uh -huh. edges are crust. Not no burnt crust. They're just a little crispy. You know it'd what I'm saying? Crisp. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. This has it. You ain't got to worry about that. It's already in there. I see it. Okay. okay. I see thank you, you. <laughs> Okay, and thank you. You answered my question too, Destiny and Miss Betty, because I see the consistency is different from mine. Mine was a little bit thicker, and maybe that's why it's heavy. So thank you for showing that. You're so welcome. Thank you, Miss Betty and Auntie families with some great recipes. I'm gonna, I've never had that before. I'm gonna definitely try that. Um, and we're gonna get out of here. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see y'all tomorrow. I'll be safe. The weather's gonna get bad later on, so be safe, everybody. All right, y'all. Right, Thank you. Good to see you, Mr. Stacy. Huh? I said, good to see you. I said, what's your email address again? Oh, um, destiny, D-S-T-I-N-Y dot M-O-S-S at Fulton County G-A dot gov. All that spelled out? Yes. Fulton all County G-A? Yeah, Fulton County G-A is all one word. Destiny dot Moss at Fulton County G-A dot gov. Okay, I'm going to send you two recipes since I'm delinquent. Thank you, thank you. And I freaking <laughs> frat recipes. Freaking frat. I expect recipes from y'all. <laughs> okay, you'll get one. <laughs> thank you. And the rest of y'all. Love y'all. We'll see no, y'all tomorrow. Too. Okay. All right. Hey, hey right. Frack. Hey. 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 <laughs> Are you Frick or Frack? <laughs> it depends on the day, Mr. Okay. Chris. <laughs> That's right. I answer for both of us. I don't know where she uh, is. It depends on the day for both of them. <laughs> See y'all. All right. Bye, y'all.